Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Hack Together kickoff, What Can You Do with the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK? Before I introduce our speakers, I have a few quick things to go over. First, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone, including our speakers. We want the reactors to be a place that everyone feels welcome. Please ask questions using the live YouTube chat. In the chat, we'll also be sharing some links that go along with today's content, as well as um, a link to our reactor survey. If you have a few minutes, we greatly appreciate your feedback. And now let's go ahead and get started and I will pass it over to Scott Hanselman. Hey friends, how's it going? I'm Scott Hanselman. I am joining you from a hotel room in Europe. I'm so excited about this, uh, this hack that I'm here up late and jet lagged and excited because I am going to learn all about Microsoft Graph and .NET just like you. Now, as you probably know, I know lots about .NET, but I don't know lots about Microsoft Graph. And that's what's so great about putting these two things together. We're going to hack together and we're going to learn together. And I'm going to learn all about what you can do with Microsoft Graph uh, and the .NET SDK. Now, in order to do that, rather than you just watching me uh, go around and Google with Bing for the documentation and try to learn graph by myself, I thought the best way to do it was to bring Yina, a partner program manager with Microsoft Graph in to teach me uh, how and show you some of the things that I've hacked together. And uh, I'm going to learn about graph, show her some of my code and see if it's any good. Uh, Yina, are you there? Hello, Scott. Thank you so much for being here with us and welcome everyone to the hack together with Microsoft Graph and .NET. I am definitely looking forward for what you've built, Scott, and what the rest of the community is going to build as part of this hackathon. Absolutely. Um, the, the possibilities are endless. Uh, I've only been uh, working on my hack for a couple of days. I, I think it's kind of clever, but I'm also still getting my head around what can be accomplished with mm -hmm. Microsoft Graph. What, what's a good way for someone to think about it if they, if they just have heard the term, but they're not mm -hmm. familiar? Right. Well, the first thing that I want you to think about is what are the set of productivity tools that you'd use every single day? Tell me some of them. Uh, you know, I do a lot of Outlook. I'm always putting files in OneDrive. I'm sending links around. Um, I'm obsessed with my calendar, so I'm doing a lot of calendar customization and coloring. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all of that information is in Microsoft Graph whether you're using Outlook, Teams, OneDrive to do, Bookings, Planner, Microsoft Search, Excel, SharePoint, Azure Active Directory, all of the Microsoft 365 services and more are part of Microsoft Graph. And all of the data that you have in those services because of the activity that you'd use or because of like the calculations that you do, we do in terms of insights, uh, all of that information is part of Microsoft Graph. And not just for your like, your work account, also for your uh, own personal account, your consumer account, Hotmail, Outlook.com, all of that information is also in the graph. Okay, so you're saying Microsoft Graph is not just a business thing for business people who have their own accounts. Right, exactly. It's for both. Uh, we have our service has both offerings. So it's a commercial offering that works uh, typically for a large organization or a, a small medium businesses. Um, a whole a bunch of services that are included in that and also has an offering for consumer. So like that's Teams for, for consumer, Outlook, OneDrive, and all of that information as well, uh, you can access through Microsoft Graph. Mm -hmm. Interesting, so you say, you say you can access it through Microsoft Graph, but then you also said a couple of times it's in the graph. For a while, I thought the graph was maybe a database, but it's an API on top of lots of databases that represent yes. anything that, that Microsoft 365 yes. could potentially absolutely. Store. It's the gateway. You can think about it as the gateway to all of that information, right? And uh, the simplest term is like it's an HTTP, HTTP API that you can access uh, with very simple HTTP calls. Interesting. So you say HTTP calls. I am old enough to remember what we used to call office automation, and I would write scripts to like automate Outlook. Uh, but mm -hmm. I would have to have Outlook running. And I was very proud of myself, but like I would run a script in Outlook and make a Word document and things like that. But everything had to be local. Everything had to be running. And if I wanted it to run when I wasn't there, I had to leave it going and running. And it was all in calm. And it was very confusing because every app had their own API. But this right. isn't that. No, no, no. So calm is runs completely on the client. 
these are APIs for all of the services that we have on the cloud, right? So it's a, a service, a cloud-based API for all of the information that is stored in our cloud for your instance of the service. So it doesn't run on the client. Uh, everything, every time that you make an HTTP request, it goes all over to our services and brings the information to you. Okay, but I have clients like my iPhone and I have an Android tablet and they have Outlook and they have OneDrive and they have PowerPoint. When I make changes to the graph, is that going to be automatically updated on all of those clients? Absolutely, because it is uh, updating the data that is in the services and that data then powers all of the experiences across all of the different platforms, right? So all of those updates that you make will be automatically synchronized across all of your clients because they're going to be pulling back data from the client, from the service as they refresh. What are some, some cool things that you've seen people do with the graph that you didn't expect? Like, cause with a hackathon, there's so much, sometimes we get like analysis paralysis where there's so many yeah. things to do. I can do anything. So I do nothing. Uh, maybe yeah. you can give me some ideas of cool stuff. I, I, it's, it goes from a wide range of applications. For example, in prior hackathons, we've seen students automate how they uh, go to their classes and like bring in content from OneNote that they have their notes in OneNote and at, uh, like study times to their calendar or you know upload some of the uh, images that they're taking from their projects into OneDrive. So some of those things we've seen uh, as part of like, uh, I would say more education-like applications. In the industry, we see a lot of automation scenarios. So creating scripts that automate specific tasks, uh, integrating with Azure functions or integrating with uh, some of the, um, you know, just like, Management of set of activities and automation. For example, uh, when an administrator uh, has to manage an organization, they have to do a lot of activities when they think about the scenario of onboarding a customer, onboarding a new user to the organization. So they have to get add them to groups and add them to uh, like specific teams, and add, uh, so they can automate all of that, all of those st steps, uh, just using Microsoft Graph. So those are some of the projects that we've seen come up um, as part of hackathons. You said two really important words that I want to talk about there. You said automate and integrate. And that mm -hmm. seems really, really interesting to me. So automate is like doing stuff while I'm asleep. So like mm -hmm. I'm jet lagged. I want to leave my graph application running. It'll run in I mean, my right now it's running on my local machine, but I'll eventually move it up into an Azure function and it's going to work while I'm not working. Mm -hmm. But then also integrating. I can make two applications that may not have anything to do with each other suddenly be fundamental parts of the same application, which I think is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. The possibilities are endless. Just, uh, you know, think about it as simple way to access all of the data, all of the information that you have across all of these productivity, security, and management services. And then that data now is in your fingertips for you to then use it in your own scenarios and solve your own um, set of problems, right? Like, so, you know, the sky's the limit. You said also, you said your, which is about me. It's about me and about my things and my data, not just my team, because I know I can access the, you know, the team if I had the access. But let's go and bring up my screen real quick. And I want to talk about me because I was looking on the graph.microsoft.com site that took me here. And mm -hmm. it's got this cool try the API. And in the animated GIF here, it's showing me this URL. And then it says slash me. Right. Is that real or is that just a cool gift? Absolutely. That is that is a path on the API that we've created that brings the user profile information for the logged in user. So why don't you try it? Let's go to Graph Explorer okay, and so uh, look at some that. of these. Oh, wow. OK, look, it is real. Right. So, so this me is a path. This is Graph Explorer, which is our API playground. Here you will be able to make API requests. You can log in with your own account, or we can use a demo account. Uh, for simplicity, just run the query, and we'll be using uh, the demo account. So we'll see Megan's information uh, showing up. And we can see that a set of properties come back in what you would expect, standard JSON that you can consume in your application. Uh, this particular response has, has been optimized in the V1 endpoint. So Microsoft Graph has two endpoints. It has V1, which is our production ready. You should use in your production applications. We have um, you know, all of the support that you would expect from an API. And we have beta, 
which is our experimental version. You will see us like putting more things that are, we're still baking and we'll lock to for, for you to give us feedback on the API shape so that we can um, you know, graduate it to V1. So in this particular API request on slash me, uh, we have selected a set of properties from the user profile that we think are going to be, you know, what the customers are going to need mode when, most when they're requesting this API. And you will see the response coming in as a JSON payload that has a few set of properties. If you switch to uh, the beta endpoint, you will see a lot more properties uh, coming back from this query. And it is not because there's uh, properties are not exposed into the B1 endpoint. It is because the B1 endpoint has been optimized. So you could actually also bring all those queries just with a simple select clause uh, from our data. I see. So it's a, mm -hmm. a projection. There's yes. all the different things I could potentially know about Megan, but in this case here, uh, you're you're going to get the the expected usual stuff. But I could say select and this and this and this, and I'll get a custom projection specific mm -hmm. to me. Interesting. Exactly. I, yeah. I noticed that there's a question from the audience already saying, "How do I download? Uh, how do I download email messages from the graph?" I don't know, but I did see this getting started, and I'm guessing it's probably over here. I had great that right there it is. So let's click on that and okay. look at some of the email requests. But see, look at this. Before I even click read query, I just want to point out how intuitive slash me slash messages. You almost could have guessed that. And then you can also uh, in Graph Explorer, if you just like remove the messages text and you will see it will show you what are some of the options that you oh, have. Wow. Yep. So you, you can uh, then go to slash me slash messages and you'll see, like, look at all of the information that is available to you here, right? Like chats coming from Teams, calendar from Outlook, contact information, like all of these things are part of Microsoft Graph. Interesting. Okay. So we can go and grab all of her messages. Right. And then you're getting them in JSON again. So you can basically get a bunch of them. See how I'm collapsing this array of messages right there. Right. That's very cool. Uh, a member of the audience is asking, do they need an Azure account? Like, how does this relate to, yes. to Azure if they're going to be a developer? So Microsoft accounts, whether it is uh, an Azure, what you, you would typically known as an Azure Active Directory account that is used for our commercial users, is absolutely needed for, uh, you know, is the, is the identity foundation for our services in Microsoft 365. And then on our consumer account, there will be a Microsoft account as our, com our consumer account. So like if you have a hotmail.com or an outlook.com or live.com account, those are, are also accounts that you can use. So just to sum it up is like, as long as you have a Microsoft owned account, right? Like whether it is with Azure Active Directory or with Microsoft uh, accounts, then you can use Microsoft Graph. Okay, so an Azure subscription is not needed to use Microsoft Graph, but since it's a Microsoft Graph, your Microsoft account is what you're going to need. Um, so you don't necessarily need an Azure subscription, but you will log into an Azure portal um, to with your account. You will log into an Azure portal to create the app registration that will enable you to do the offloads to call Microsoft Graph because Microsoft Graph is your data. So you don't want anyone just calling in and getting access to all of your data, right? Like, so there's obviously a set of like consent and auth flows that are in place in order for like authenticated access and, and author authorized access to be able to get access to the data. So the first thing that you will do is you will go to um, the Azure portal and then you will create, you will register an application that will give that application an identity and you will select the set of permissions that you want your uh, your application to have. So, for example, you can say, "I want my application to access the user profile and the out, uh, OneDrive files." So, you'll select user.read and files.read or read/write, depending on the type of activities that you want to do, and then take that up, um, take that application through uh, an offload that will result in getting in your application getting an access token that will then enable you to call Microsoft Graph with uh to retrieve that information okay that makes sense i think that that's an important little technical detail there to talk about because i think that the question underneath their question is you know do they need to sign up for something and put in their credit card mm -hmm. and run applications and stuff like that well if you want to run your things in the azure sure but yes. on the example that i'm going to show you i'm just running a console app locally but i did log into azure and tell the graph about my app 
mm-hmm. ahead of time. So my my app has an identity. Right. Uh, exactly. That's unique. Yeah. Okay. I noticed also here uh, I clicked on code snippets, and it seems like you generated, like yes. you code generated for me right there. Yes, absolutely. So. As part of Microsoft Graph, so remember, we said is an HTTP API, right? That you can use to do the full set of CRUD, create, update, delete operations, read. Um, but then, like, a lot of the times our developers are working or have preferences with regards to the languages that they want to use. And uh, so we have uh, client libraries. We have client libraries that we've created on a variety of languages. And, and then we generate um, those client languages with a set of tool sets that we've created. Uh, Microsoft Graph can be described with OpenAPI. So we take OpenAPI and generate a whole bunch of uh, supported languages like C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Go, PowerShell, PHP, Python. We don't have all of the samples here, but we have all of those libraries available for developers to use. And when uh, in Graph Explorer, what we're doing is we're generating those sample requests using the client library. So if you go this, if in PowerShell, this is how you will get that particular um, user call. Very cool. And I see a question in the uh, from the audience as well here that's asking about, can I run this from VS Code? And I'm going to go ahead and answer without knowing the answer. I'm going to guess yes, because... I can run PowerShell from VS Code. I can run JavaScript from VS Code. Absolutely. So yes, I could use VS Code. I could use the command line. I can use whatever makes me happy. You can use CLI. You can use, you just reference your packages and you know you are off to go in VS Code. Very cool. This is great. Um, one of the things that I want to do is show you my application. Uh, if you've got a second. It looks like I've lost my mouse cursor here for just a sec. So let me see if I can get it back. While you find it, I'm going to answer one of the questions that is coming from the audience that says, can you use Graph Explorer with real data and not just dummy data? Absolutely. The dummy data or the uh, demo data is going to be there for you to just start playing with it. But if you log into Graph Explorer, you will be able to use Graph Explorer with your own data. Graph Explorer will give you access to um, the same amount of data, the same amount of information that you will have access to um, because it's an, uh, basically doing request to Microsoft Graph on your behalf. Very cool. All right. So you mentioned that it's a REST API. Like in this case here, we were saying get to either beta or v1. We can also do post and put and patch and delete mm-hmm. and things like that. So in the spirit of integration and of my data, I thought it'd be cool to bring up my blood sugar. So I'm a type one diabetic and I have these um, these devices that are plugged into me mm-hmm. and uh, I have a REST API that shows my blood sugar. And I've talked about this before. So you can see here um, in my Git prompt, if I go to the code location that I wrote my, little, my hack for the hack together, um, you'll notice that my blood sugar is here and it's trending downward. I see my Git branch. So I'm using my REST API here inside of a, a, a prompt tool called Oh My Posh. This makes me realize that a hack that I haven't written yet would be I could show like unread emails or I could show my next calendar invite. I could one of the hacks mm-hmm. someone could work on would be a prompt with the graph integrated. I just like thought of that. Yes. Yes, okay. that's that and more you can do. Actually, you know, I know that you played a little bit with this. So why don't we go to VS Code and you show us what you've yeah. done. The so next, last I have week. this blood sugar information. I have information about when my sensors need to be replaced. I wanted to put a reminder for when that can be replaced and when that's going to show up in my calendar. So here's my calendar. I'm going to go into Visual Studio. And the, the open source tool I'm using is called Night Scout. And Night Scout uh, talks about your sensors, which is my glucose, and then my cannula, which is my pump. So I thought I would write some code that would keep track of when my glucose sensor is about to expire and my insulin pump is about to expire. Mm -hmm. So I go and call with this generated uh, REST client here. We used used a tool called Kyoto to generate this REST client. And I call Night Scout and I get back this tuple, tuple, depending on who you ask, that has the expiration dates of these things. The pump lasts three days. The insulin sensor lasts 10 days. This has nothing to do with graph until we get down to these little functions here, add calendar and add to do. And this graph service was really easy. I just made a graph service and I passed in that 
that client ID. This is the identifier that's saying this is me, yeah. right? This is my app. Mm -hmm. This is the application that we've registered in Azure Active Directory uh, through the Azure portal. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So in this graph service, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is um, it's using what's called an interactive browser credential. It seems like in Microsoft Graph, there's lots of ways for someone to, as an app, to say, hey, it's me, it's, it's this Absolutely. user, or it's this admin. Yeah, yeah. So you can log in. Um, in order to make API requests, remember, you will need this access token. And the access token can be, a tri uh, can be obtained through multiple ways. You can, for example, have, um, think about as you mentioned offline access, right? Like you can have a service daemon application that is not uh, acting on behalf of a user and can get tokens to make requests to Microsoft Graph. You can have, for example, an interactive browser credential, which is like actually a user comes in, logs in, provides consent. If there is for like uh, multi-factor authentication required, it will take care of that and then uh, get the access token for your application. There are like several other patterns of patterns like that that like you will be able to use to to get the access token that you need depending on what type of application you're writing. Okay, cool. So then in this case, we were talking about me. Then I log in as me. I can only see my email, my calendar, my stuff. But even right. more, you mentioned that I have to tell uh, the graph ahead of time the permissions that I'm interested in. So my app right now, I just said calendar dot write and calendar dot read. Yes. I don't really need my email right now. Exactly. So we'll just uh, pass those uh, permission scopes uh, into their code. So if you look at that graph, when you're instantiating the graph service client, you have the credentials and you have the scopes that you're passing in. Exactly. Right. So in this case here, the scopes that I ended up picking, I won't show you because it's I've hidden my API key in the settings as well. But I just made it a setting that I can change and it's just an array. All right. Cool. So then I just wrote a little helper function here that says uh, add calendar event. This is just a wrapper for me because mm -hmm. here I wanted to make sure that I didn't add an event that already existed. So I have a little bit of check there like, hey, if it, had, if it doesn't have the event, add the event. I wanted to use some cool emoji because I think there's always an opportunity to add more emoji. And then I also output to the, uh, to the console. But if we go and look at this, how easy is this? We spend more time messing around with date times and time zones than we do actually talking to the graph. Yeah, so this is the graph service. Uh, tell us what you have here okay. in the graph service constructor. So I wrapped up the graph service. We've got the graph service constructor here, which is really straightforward, and it uses that interactive browser credential. Then add event, if I close up the date time stuff, it takes the subject, the emoji, and then when the date is going to happen, when the event's going to happen. And then look, it's that me again. And it's very yes. fluent. I think they call this a fluent API, right? It's me dot calendar dot messages dot whatever. And then I just post to my events collection and it just shows up. And I could actually watch it show up like on my phone because it's mm -hmm. happening in the graph. It appears everywhere. How simple it is. Right. Yeah, I just think it's so funny that I'm messing around with time zones and adding hours and stuff. Uh, that was the where the time was spent. But adding things to the graph, once I got access, it just worked. Um, maybe I can try running it and see if it works in real time. Hold on. And you integrated with Calendar and also with To Do, right? So Oh, that's a great point, actually. I forgot. I have two permissions. Thank you. Um, because I realized, because I use the To Do app a lot, Microsoft To Do, because mm -hmm. one of the cool integrations that people see as a user is, for example, like if you're in Outlook and you flag an email, it shows up as a To Do, and then you can create events based on To Dos or create events based on emails. So then emails, To Dos, and and, and calendar events oh, all get mushed right? together. So I'm like, while I was going and making a calendar reminder, a calendar event, I'm like, you know, I really should should just be making to-dos. So I just ended up making both because once I had access to the graph, it's literally that easy. It's me.todo.lists instead of me.calendar.events. And it's the same model though. I post the same thing. So mm -hmm. it was not hard to do. And once again, do a little bit of time zone dancing. I can see an opportunity to maybe refactor a bit. And I just create this uh, to-do task, which uh, is, is, is really trivial. Um, 
which is pretty cool. And then right now, um, I actually needed to get the ID of this because you can have lots of different lists within the to-do. So I just picked the default right. when I grabbed the first task list. Um, it turns out you can have like hundreds of them. So I don't, I don't want all of them. I just get like the first one if I have, uh, if I have one at all. It was super easy. Okay, let's see you running. All right. Now, I believe that when I run this for the first time, we're going to get uh, the prompt. I may get it on another monitor. And I'll bring it over here. So I'm going to just do a quick build and we'll hopefully pop up our browser. Oops. What? Oh, my Night Scout is failing here. This is going to be fun. We're going to do live debugging here for a second. Let me go over here real quick. I'm going to move this off, off the screen because I'm going to poke around and make sure that my URL is, is the same. The only thing that has changed is that I am in a hotel in Sweden on someone else's DNS. So <laughs> it's very likely that um, I'm on someone else's DNS server and it might not be able to find what I'm going to do. I'm going to try that again and I'm going to switch back and I'll pull it back over here and we'll try one more time. It's always good when demos don't work on the first try, right? Because it just shows how realistic it's, things are. It's work out. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're hacking, right? This is the fun part of the hackathon, right? If it worked on the first time, it would, then it would, it wouldn't be a hackathon. It'd be a demo and we don't want that. Okay. So it's popping up a browser here. Mm -hmm. And it's asking me to log in, and we're using this test tenant. What is a tenant? A tenant is uh, typically the word that we use to describe uh, the organization that is has a service with Microsoft 365. So it will be your organization, your school. That will be the, the term that we use is tenant. But like you're right now using M365 Advocates. That's the the tenant, the organization that you're going to log into with your credentials. Okay. So I'm going to click on that. And it says authentication complete. You can return back to the application. And then my app goes away because that's all my app does. Because I was imagining it would be like a um, an Azure function. So I started out as a console app and I'll move it up into Azure. That's so now we'll go over into our email and let's take a look. If it added, oh, look at that. Tomorrow's going to be an interesting day. So here's Wednesday today. Tomorrow, my glucose sensor is going to expire and my insulin pump is going to expire. So those will be days that I will update my my stuff. And then I hope you, over, you had, I hope you have all of that with you in your suitcase now that you're in Sweden. Yeah, wow. that's actually a whole thing. We have a whole joke about diabetics who have one suitcase for like their clothes and stuff and the other one for all of their supplies. And we have these memes that say, oh, how long are you going for? Just overnight. So yeah, we I have all the equipment. And then look at this. You can see integrated in Outlook, the to-do. You can see my testing. You can see the expirations from a couple days ago when mm -hmm. I was changing my emojis. And then you see how I went from an alarm emoji and now I have a... a drop of blood and a needle. So it's just, it was super easy to do. And now I'm trying to think of other things, other things that I can automate with graph. Absolutely. So just to give you a couple of, of data points, just like you did, Scott, there are another close to 1 million developers using Microsoft Graph to integrate data from Microsoft 365 on, for Microsoft services into their applications. And those are reaching over 1.5 million users across our services. So the opportunity here, when you build an application with Microsoft Graph, is just uh, gigantic. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to, you know, depending on the language that you're using, .NET, of course, because we are in the .NET plus Microsoft Graph hackathon. But uh, there's other set of languages that we support as well, uh, TypeScript, Python, PHP, Ruby. So whatever you might want to use in a given project, we definitely have a way to um, give you a client that takes care of all of that boilerplate that you don't may not, might not want to write, right? Like that takes care of retrying, takes care of pagination, the auth, um, it's not the same library, by the way, that we have the Microsoft Graph libraries and the auth libraries, but that we have pairings on 
the libraries on each of those languages. The auth library takes care of all of the auth dances, and it makes it super easy for you to just integrate all of this data into your solutions. Yeah, it was surprisingly easy to get this working. It was mostly setting up my calendar and getting my permissions correct, but the actual writing of the graph, writing to the graph, it was very easy and I was um, iterating very quickly. So it's very hackathon friendly. Indeed, indeed it is. Um, yeah. So if there's anything that we want the audience to take away from this is graph.microsoft.com. This is the place where you will be able to find Graph Explorer, the graph documentation, getting started tutorials that will walk you step by step on the creation of an application. You're going to find all of these, like the, the pointers to the libraries, all of the information that you need to get started is right here on graph.microsoft.com. And then Graph Explorer, we saw a question earlier that yes, you can have read only access to these samples. And you'll notice that if you move around and look on the left hand side, there's a ton of different things that they can look for. If you see one with a lock, it's probably because it's sample data, but you can log into your own account, can you not? And yes. use this on real data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You will, um, using the demo account, you will only be able to make reads, but you can log into your own account, like Scott is doing right now. And then you will be able to do the full CRUD operations that you would expect. Right. So then that would mean, if I understand correctly, I should be able to go here and search for everything. And now I'm in you, Graph Explorer looking at the calendar events that we just created. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? All right. Absolutely. Uh, folks are asking if I'm going to put this uh, out there, I will put this on my GitHub uh, when I get it a little more cleaned up and get rid of my secrets. Um, but we've got some some friends that we're going to bring in who are going to talk more about the uh, graph and take us forward, aren't we? We are. Aisha and Waldek, uh, welcome. Hey, folks. What? Hi, what an incredible kickoff of Hack Together. And we are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for showing us all these incredible scenarios, demos, and Graph Explorer. I think we had an amazing start of the Hack Together. The main thing we will move forward with it is we will learn what we're going to do in Hack Together, what are tips and tricks, prices, and more. Waldek and I will walk you through all. And thanks again, Scott and Ina, for showing us all the incredible things we can do with Microsoft Graph. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you so much for, for having me. I just want to say thank you, Scott. Uh, you have been awake for like 31 hours and yet still uh, are here uh, with us on the hackathon. The community appreciates you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And um, to everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. And we're looking forward to all the things that you are going to build with Microsoft Graph and .NET. Thank you so much. And Waldek, let's jump into what we're going to do with Hack Together, right? Definitely. Um, so we've seen amazing scenarios and introduction uh, about Microsoft Graph, Graph Explorer already from Scott and Yina. So moving forward, we will only talk about the overview of Hack Together, uh, Microsoft Graph and .NET, the prerequisites. If you haven't checked our repo yet, we will walk you through where you can find the right information. We will talk about the prices, the rules to earn these prices, and we will show you the best place to be. It's our GitHub repository. And then we will wrap up the sessions. We may answer a couple of questions in the chat as well. Let's get started. OK, so before we jump into the overview, actually, we want to introduce ourselves, uh, Waldek and myself, because we will be here for a while. In the upcoming weeks, we will have a couple of other sessions. So better to introduce ourselves first and then jump into the hack together. My name is Aicha Bash. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft in M365 Advocacy. I live in Dubai, and I love building solutions using Teams, Microsoft Graph, and Azure. If you'd like to connect, you can always connect me through Twitter, LinkedIn, and also GitHub as well. Let's give Waldek introduce himself as well, and then we can jump into it. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm also a cloud developer advocate for Microsoft 365 at Microsoft. I used to be an MVP for, for a long time. Now I actually work at Microsoft, which is really cool. I live in the Netherlands. I'm a dad to two kids. I am a husband. Um, 
And I am here also to help you hack with Microsoft Graph and .NET. Um, I am a, a, a part of the uh, Microsoft 365 plat platform uh, um, uh, group and community. Uh, you can find me on GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever. The most important part, whenever, if you have a question, if you're stuck at anything, please do not hesitate to reach out, okay? So let's have a little overview of what do we have for you for the upcoming two weeks. So today we are on March 1, kicking off the hackathon. We've just saw a cool demo showing you how you can integrate things that you have already built and how you can bring them to where you work, right? Or where you store info about your work or school or personal space, right? So we've seen how you can integrate your apps with your calendars, emails, tasks, and more. So this is just day one, showing you what we have to offer. Tomorrow, we will start with the very first session about like, what is Graph in practice? How you can use that? Getting really from Graph Explorer from Overview, also to code, getting to that first call. How do you get token? How do you get off in place? And then how you can use Graph across different types of apps that you can build using Microsoft Graph and .NET. Uh, next week, we will have another talk on March 8th. We'll have another session showing you some more examples of some cool and inspiring apps that you can build with the Microsoft Graph and .NET. Finally, on March 15th, the grand finale of uh, the hackathon, we will close up with uh, a chance for you to meet experts from Microsoft, from our community, basically to talk more about the Microsoft Graph and making it clear that this is just the start. This is not the end, right? On March 5th, if, 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 if 15, we close up, but this is just the, uh, the beginning of your adventure with Microsoft Graph and .NET. So we want to also offer you a chance to uh, continue journey and, and the work you do, right? So more about that uh, then. But first things first, how do you start, right? So uh, first step you got to do, register. Why do you, do, do you need that? Well, if you win a prize, we want to know where to send that to, right? So we kind of need some info about you so that we know where to post the price. And it's just really short. It's a form with a few things you need to tick off. And basically with that, you are ready to go. The next step is, we mentioned that already, the place to be where you will find samples that we've built. Basically, we built a number of different apps or um, 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 uh, templates of, 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 of apps to help you get started, to, to help you get through that first uh, step and showing you how you can build a type of app on .NET, whether that is a web app, console app, attach it to Microsoft Graph, and basically with that, start bringing the data and insights from Microsoft 365 to your app. So all of that and more resources you will find on our repo. It's also the place where you can ask any questions you might have, whether that's something simple or something really complex, whether you have an idea about your app or you wonder if you can accomplish something or you just don't know how that one line of code works. No question is too hard. No question is off limits. Anything, anything you want to ask, go to our repo. First things first, though, we mentioned something about prizes. Aicha, what can <laughs> we or can people win? We we don't win win anything. What can our uh, audience win? So what's the point of joining Hackathon without prizes, right? It's exactly. the best part of joining the Hackathon. We learn, obviously, we build apps with .NET and Microsoft Graph, and also we earn exciting prizes. So before we jump into the prizes, I just want to highlight that you have to fill out the registration form. So we will know that where you're located, we can send out all the prizes to you easily. Um, so. When you register and when you join the challenge, everyone who submits their project at the end of the challenge will gain a digital Credly badge, which is right at the bottom of the slide. And you can share that badge across your social channels. You can also attach it in your profiles. And we will also have some other prizes for 
exciting projects. Our judges will review the projects and then the first prize winner. And when I say first prize winner, we think about a group, but uh, each member of a team, including four person will gain a an Xbox and uh, $200 gift cards, $100 Azure credit, and again, a digital Credly badge. As I mentioned, everyone will get that, but on top of it, you will get Xbox, $200 gift card, $100 Azure credit. In the second prize winner, we'll get $200 gift card and $100 Azure credit with a digital credit badge. And finally, in the third prize, we will give you $100 Azure credit and as well as a digital credit badge. So what do you have to do to earn these prizes? We definitely have some judging criteria. First thing, to earn the um, badge, digital badge, the only thing you have to do is building an app uh, using Microsoft Graph and .NET SDK and submitting the project and you will automatically earn that badge right away. We will look into three categories in the judging criteria. The first one, does the app work? And the second one, does the app use Microsoft Graph .NET SDK? Until this point, you're good with your digital badge. If it is working and if you use .NET SDK, then you earn your badge. If you want to earn something more in the first place, second place, and a third place, then we look into creativity, innovation, and how polished your app is. And we also take into consideration that how creative you are and how beyond you went through. I also want to highlight that obviously we don't expect everyone to jump into something really crazy. We have some top scenarios for you. If you think that Hack Together is a great, great place to, for you to learn and earn a digital badge. You can check out our top scenarios on our repository. We have more than 30 scenarios listed. Feel free, feel free to pick one scenario from there, build your app and earn your digital badge. If you want to uh, take it one step further, then maybe add your creativity in that scenario. Um, and we, maybe you will be in the first place, second place or the third place. And this is all about our prices and judging criteria. Finally, I just want to leave you with two main links. The place you have to be is ak.ms slash hack dash together. That's the place we have everything about the hackathon, all the rules, all the templates, uh, the price details, the judging criteria, everything you, you can find there. As Waldek mentioned, we have great discussions there. Uh, we already have three discussion channels. We already started engaging with our uh, participants. If you haven't yet, go ahead and introduce yourself in the discussions. And the second link I want to leave you with ak.ms slash hack dash together slash register. This is definitely for you to receive your own uh, gifts. So if you are in prizes, we will need your registration. Make sure to register so you will be able to, you will be eligible to earn your badge. And finally, um, I want to highlight that this is the beginning. This is the kickoff session, but this is not the end. We have upcoming reactor sessions. We have three more coming as Waldeck mentioned. Tomorrow will be the kickstart of live coding. We will show you deep dive. We already seen great examples of how to use Graph Explorer and also a demo from Scott and Ina. But tomorrow we will deep dive getting started with Microsoft Graph and .NET. We will have program managers, product managers joining us from Microsoft Graph team and showing us how we can live code uh, with Microsoft Graph .NET SDK. Next week on Wednesday, we will have Ask the Experts session. We will have Microsoft Graph team over, .NET advocacy team over, and we will answer all of your questions. We are assuming you will be in the midpoint of your project, so you might have some questions to ask. And in March 15th, the last day of our hackathon, we will talk about where you can continue engaging with Microsoft Graph community, what are the best places that we communicate, we have community calls and more. I think we will share more, more details there. Um, but other than these sessions, we are 
24-7 monitoring the discussions on our GitHub repo. <laughs> Maybe not 24-7, but <laughs> let's say 24-7 because we have a good coverage around the world in the team. That so is right. we, that is right. we, keep, we keep checking the discussions all the time. If you have questions, if you want to share your project idea with us, or Maybe if you want to introduce yourself and have a chat, then use the discussions on, on GitHub. We are definitely looking forward to receiving messages from you all the time. And Waldek, with that, I'm assuming we have a couple minutes left. If there's any question in the chat, we can also try to answer them. Yes, and there actually are. So I just pay, picked one, and that would be a great thing also for you. Does the Graph Explorer show code snippets for the .NET SDK? Yes, it does. And it was actually in Scott's uh, demo. Uh, we have C Sharp, JavaScript, Java, and PowerShell available in uh, Graph Explorer. And if you choose the right API in Microsoft Graph, let's say you choose slash me or slash me slash messages, whichever you choose, then the only thing you have to do is just go to the code snippets, select the language you like, and then in the C-sharp part, you will have .NET SDK. You can copy this part and paste it in your code. You're pretty much good to go. Excellent. Um, then there's another question. Can I submit more than one project? That is an interesting one. Like I didn't expect wow. that, that <laughs> people are so eager to start and so eager to hack that they want to submit not one, but two or more apps. Do we allow that? We didn't actually even think about it. <laughs> you Maybe you can compete in between your projects if both of them are so amazing. I don't think we have any limitation of submitting projects. If you have more than one project, we are excited to see both of them. Actually, we don't want to limit any creativity on that area. Let both of your projects compete in the SAC. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Uh, one more thing that is uh, that I found in the chat. Can we find email by GUID or ID? So what are the different ways in which you could get um, people's emails? So I guess email in this sense is a person as opposed to their email um, um, message. Or maybe is it a maybe it is both. So let's let's do both. How you can get info about a person from Microsoft Graph mm -hmm. and then once you have them, how you can retrieve their emails. What is a different way about it? I think um, in Scott's demo, we understood that we can use Microsoft Graph slash me to get my personal profile as long as I'm authenticated. And if you, if I want to get your information, Waldeck, then I will first need the right privileges. We will talk more details about this tomorrow. But if I put your user ID or your email, um, I can I, I should be able to get your profile details and after that point I should be able to get your phone number your title uh, your location um, as well as your email address so do you have anything else to add in this yeah so that'll be the first part what about my email messages can you get to them? email messages can, can you get to my emails um I think we need um, app-only permissions for that part, right? Because um, if I'm logged in, I there's no way I can access to your data. So the main part is that everyone can access their own data. And that's the security part of it. We don't want, I don't want you to be access to my own emails. <laughs> so we don't want anyone else to access each other's um, email messages, obviously, or calendar invites and so on. Definitely. So what is your comment on this? Definitely. I, I think that I, I wonder, so it's it's something that I haven't tried, but I wonder if I could give you explicit access to my inbox and that, that would also allow you to get to my emails. But that's something I haven't tried. So that's a great chance for a hack. If you want to hack around emails, that's something that you can absolutely try. Um, there was another yes. really interesting question, which is like, it's so cool to see how creative people get. Can I submit a project using the .NET SDK for graph, but using, but with an app written in PowerShell? So you write a PowerShell script that will use the .NET Graph SDK. Wow, what you say? <laughs> that's really creative. 
<laughs> I think you can totally do that as long as you use Microsoft Graph uh, .NET SDK. There is no limit other than this. You can definitely use PowerShell with it. We also got question in GitHub discussions actually using Graph .NET SDK with Power Platform. That's also another great way of consuming um, .NET SDK of Microsoft Graph. You, there's no limit of using um, any other tools. If you're interested in combining PowerShell with Microsoft Graph .NET SDK, you're definitely free to do that. Perfect. There's another thing that I wanted to answer. There's a question about how do you take part in the hack as a team, right? Do you need to have new GitHub account or what? Like, how does does that work? Don't create a new account. Use the accounts you already have. <laughs> Don't create new accounts. When you submit a project in there, in that field, we have a separate field where you can uh, list all members who work on the team. And up to four folks on a team will get the prize. So it's really up to you. If you want to do more folks on a team, you can, but then you'll get to create it like who's playing Xbox when. Uh, but yeah, don't create new accounts. Use the accounts you already have. And when submitting a project, just list all accounts who work on that and you're good to go. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to create any new space yeah. for that. Let's don't get, get weird and create new accounts just for the heck. Don't. Uh, let's see if there is, do we need to make a video or having a call to introduce the app that they've built? So how does that work? Um, I think to start with, we are definitely good with your uh, repository. If you can uh, share your GitHub repository, your project repository with us, um, our judges will go in into and take a look at your project details. We will actually try to run your project. And if it works, then you're, el you're eligible to uh, earn your uh, Credly badge, as long as you're using .NET SDK, obviously. Um, and in this point, you don't have to record any video about your solution. Um, we are just looking forward to seeing the code, and we are good with that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a video makes it easier for us to understand what was your idea behind. So if you mm -hmm. made a com more more complex app, it helps, but it's not a, a prerequisite. Like you don't need to, to have it. If you're not great on camera, you don't want to do it perfectly fine. If you do it excellent, it will just make it easier for us to understand your idea behind the app. So it's a very nice to have but it like it doesn't mean that your app is less if you don't include a video. So that is perfectly fine. There's uh, another amazing question, yeah. by the way, well, Waldek, I want to ask you, can I create Microsoft Teams bot or it required to use templates from GitHub, Maui, console app, et cetera? You can build any type of app. If you want to build a, a Microsoft Teams bot, Perfectly fine. If you want to build mobile, can you build mobile app with .NET? You probably can, right? So basically, Maui. the templates we offer are just easy start. You don't need yeah. to use them. You can use your own. You can build your own app from scratch. You don't if you need don't need any help. Perfectly fine. You are good to go. You can build any type of app as long as it's .NET and uses Microsoft Graph .NET SDK. These are the really like two minimum bare minimum things. Other than that, you can build serverless. You can build, what else is there? Web apps, console apps, daemon apps, desktop apps, mobile apps. Any other apps? <laughs> no, actually, apps. That's, how, that's how I started learning about uh, Microsoft Graph. The first time probably I used it was in a bot uh, in .NET. And I think that's a great way of consuming Microsoft Graph. You can bring your um, data or your team's data into a team's bot. I think that's a really great scenario. You don't, as Valdek mentioned, we don't have any limitations about a type of app. We just wanted to share with you a couple of examples for you to get started. But if you want to build any other kind of app, we are totally good with that. There's one more question about those prizes. They're really ex exciting, shiny <laughs> things. If you work on a hack as a team, team of four, does that mean everybody on a team, these four folks on a team, each of them get an Xbox? So we give four to the team. Is that right? Totally. Yes. Perfect. We get four to the team and you don't have to share it. <laughs> Yeah, as but if you are a four. team of one, you will get only one. You will not get all, yeah, all four of them. Get four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. 
what else we've got there? What else we've got there? Um, I'm wondering, there's some, there's somebody who wonders if it's possible to combine a .NET MAUI app with Microsoft Graph. Yes, it is possible. Yes. In fact, in our repo, we even have a template for that that shows you how you would do that. Basically getting you over that first step, showing you how you would call Microsoft Graph from a .NET MAUI app. We've got example for, for that. Um, what else is there? What else is there? What else is there? Final question. Maybe we can yeah. get a final question. What if we entered as an individual, but are a team now? <laughs> that's a good question. And that's what we want you to do. Actually, we want you to engage with other participants and become a team. As long as you submit your project and when you're submitting, mention the users who worked on that project you're totally good. Um, definitely, you can uh, submit as a team, even though you registered individually. And there was one more thing that we were very, very, very much asked to answer. I'd like to build an app in Rust and use then Graph API. Would that count too? Rust, I'm assuming it's not consuming .NET uh, no, SDK? It's, not. it's a different programming mm. language. Okay, so unfortunately, this uh, hackathon is only for Microsoft Graph.NET SDK at this point. We also got a separate question about JavaScript SDK, but um, we only accept submissions with Microsoft Graph.NET SDK for this hackathon. Yeah, and I mean, it's perfectly fine. Like if you work with Graph or with Rust, it's perfectly fine to build your app in Rust, show it off, off to others, but for this hack, like to, to be eligible for a prize, .NET is really the minimum, so. And I see a great comment. It looks like my team of me and my kids will be busy. That's a good Excellent. start. That, that will be a great hackathon. <laughs> exactly, like no better chance to work together with your kids. Hack away, get creative <laughs> because kids will, you know, they will be not limited by you can do or you cannot do. They'll be like, I want to do that. And then he was like, yeah. oh my God, I never thought of that. Like they always bring up in me, at least like the, the, the best ideas because their ideas are very much unlimited. Like they are not limited by what you can and cannot do. They just think like, I want that. Yeah. And don't forget, they have to register too, to the hackathon. With GitHub. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> with GitHub accounts and everything. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, shall we close down final words for the coming days? Yes, so definitely. Don't forget that tomorrow, the same time as today, we will have a session to kickstart learning about Microsoft Graph.NET SDK. We will do live coding. We will deep dive about Microsoft Graph, and it will be a super technical session. And as of today, you can start building your app for, uh, with Microsoft Graph, and we are so excited to hearing about it in our GitHub discussions and maybe in social channels too. Don't forget to use hashtag hack together. Start your engines. Let's get hacking. Awesome. So let's connect again tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing all the amazing projects. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, folks. See ya. Bye.